Our objectives for this lesson are the following. Represent exponential functions and discuss the properties of exponential functions. Let us start with f of x is equal to 2 raised to x. So let us have table of values. Assign values for x. I have here negative numbers, 0, and positive numbers. Let us compute for the resulting values of y. All we have to do is to substitute each value of x in the function. So let's start with negative 4. So f of negative 4 is equal to 2 raised to negative 4. And we know that if we have a negative exponent, let us bring down the whole expression to make it positive. And 2 raised to 4 is 16, so we have 1 over 16. So the value here is 1 over 16. Now let us plot this. Negative 4, 1 over 16. So negative 4 and then 1 over 16 means we are going to divide 1 unit into 16 equal parts. The first part, because 1, would be 1 over 16. So again, negative 4 and then 1 over 16 here. Next, let's have negative 3. Let us substitute. So we have f of negative 3 equals 2 raised to negative 3. Bring this down. We have 1 over 2 raised to 3. And 2 raised to 3 is 8. So we have 1 over 8. So this is 1 over 8. Let us plot negative 3. This time, we are going to divide 1 unit into 8 equal parts. The first division will be 1 over 8. So negative 3 and then 1 over 8. Next, let's have negative 2. So f of negative 2 equals 2 raised to negative 2. So this will become 1 over 2 squared. And 2 squared is 4. So we have 1 fourth. So this is 1 fourth. Negative 2. This time, the one unit we are going to divide into 4 equal parts. The first division will be 1 fourth. So we have negative 2, 1 fourth. Next, negative 1. f of negative 1 is equal to 2 raised to negative 1. So we have 1 over 2 raised to the first power, and 2 raised to the first power is still 2. So we have 1 half. So this is 1 half. So negative 1, and then the 1 unit, we're just going to divide it into 2 parts. So at the middle, so negative 1 and then 1 half would be here. Next, let us substitute 0 to our function, so f of 0 equals 2 raised to 0. As I've said, any expression or number except 0 raised to 0 is equal to 1. So this is 1. So we have 0, 1. Next, let us substitute 1. So we have f of 1 is equal to 2 raised to 1, and that is 2. So we have here 2. 1, 2. Next, we have 2. Substitute f of 2 equals 2 squared, which is equal to 4. So this is 4. So we have 2, 4. And last one, we have 3. So we have f of 3 equals 2 cubed, which is equal to 8. So this is 8. So we have 3 and then 8. Now let us connect the points. You will notice that as our x increases by 1 unit, our y doubles its value from the previous value. So for example, from 1, it becomes 2, and then 2 to 4, and then 4 to 8, and then it will be 16. This is what you call exponential growth. And this happens only when our base is greater than 0 but not equal to 1. It is an increasing function. This time, let us have 1 half raised to x. So once again, let's have table of values. Let us assign values of x. I have here negative numbers, 0, and positive numbers. To determine the resulting values of y, we simply have to substitute our x value in our function. So let's start with negative 3. So g of negative 3 is equal to 1 half raised to negative 3. And then I'll distribute negative 3 to 1 and 2 here. Then to make this positive, I'll bring the expression down, and to make this positive, I'll bring the expression up, like this one. So 2 cubed is 8, 1 cubed is 1. So I have 8 over 1, or simply 8. So this will be 8. Negative 3, and then positive 8. It's here. 
For negative 2, we are going to follow the same process, but this time this will be 2 and this one will also be 2. So I'll be having 2 squared divided by 1 squared. And 2 squared is 4. 1 squared is 1. So I have 4 divided by 1 or 4. So negative 2 and positive 4. Now, for negative 1, same thing. So, this will be 1 and 1. So, that will be 2 raised to the first power, which is 2, over 1 raised to 1, which is also 1. So, 2 over 1 is 2. So, we have negative 1 and then positive 2. Now, for 0, 1 half raised to 0, any number except 0 raised to 0 is equal to 1. So, we have 0, 1. Now, for 1, let us substitute 1 in our function. So, this will be g of 1 is equal to 1 half raised to 1. Distributing 1, so it will be 1 raised to 1 over 2 raised to 1. 1 raised to 1 is 1, 2 raised to 1 is 2. So, I have 1 half. So, this will be 1 half. So, 1 and then 1 half means we are going to divide 1 unit into 2 parts. So, at the middle, it's here. Next, let's have 2. So, same process, but this will become 2, and this one will also be 2. 1 squared, this is still 1, but 2 squared is 4, so I have 1 fourth. So, 2. This time, let us divide 1 unit into 4 equal parts. The first division will be 1 fourth. Next, 3. Let us substitute here, so this will be 3. So, 1 cube is 1, 2 cube is 8, so I have 1 eight. So, 3, and then dividing 1 into 8 equal parts, the first division will be 1, 8. And for 4, let us substitute here. So, this will be 4, and this will also be 4. 1 to the 4th power is 1, and 2 to the 4th is 16. So, I'll have 1 over 16. So, 4, and then 1 unit divided into 16 equal parts, the first division will be 1 over 16. Now, let us connect the points. Notice that this time, as our x is increasing by 1 unit, our y is divided into 2. So, from 8, it becomes 4, then 4 to 2, then 2 to 1. So, our curve moves is steeply downward going to the right, but it will not touch the x-axis. This is what we call exponential decay. And this happens when our base is less than 1 but greater than 0. It is a decreasing function. Here are the two graphs that we produced. The blue one is f of x equals 2 raised to x, and the red one is g of x equals 1 half raised to x. Both of these graphs have base that is greater than 0 but not equal to 1. Let us discuss the properties of exponential functions. All properties that will be enumerated later are observable in these two graphs. So let's start with the domain. So, for the domain, let us consider the blue graph first. This will extend infinitely going to the left, and this one will go infinitely going up. And this one will go wider and wider. So, it means the domain is from negative infinity up to positive infinity. Same thing is true with the red graph, because this will go wider and wider as this graph moves up, and this one will go infinitely going to the right, so it's from negative infinity to positive infinity as well. So the domain is the set of all real numbers, or from negative infinity to positive infinity. Next, let's have the range. Do you see any graph here below the y-axis? None. So, the graph started at 0. Actually, not at exactly 0 because it does not touch the x-axis. So, from 0 to positive infinity, but 0 is not included. So, not included, parenthesis. Then, what kind of function is this? Let's analyze. Let's have the blue one first. So, this is a function and this is a one-to-one -one function. The red one is also a function and also one-to-one. -one. So, both of these graphs are one-to-one -one function. Next one, the y and the x-intercept. The y-intercept is the point where the graphs crosses the y-axis. So, it's here and that point is 0, 1. How about the x Intercept. It is the point where the graphs crosses the x-axis. 
but as I've said earlier, they will not touch the x-axis. The x-axis serves as the asymptote. So therefore, there is no x-intercept. Next, horizontal and vertical asymptote. I just mentioned the x-axis will serve as the horizontal asymptote. So the graphs will get closer and closer to the x-axis, but they will never touch it. The equation of x-axis is the line y is equal to 0. And for the vertical asymptote, since this will just go wider and wider, the same thing with this one, then therefore there is no vertical asymptote. And finally, we say that the graph is increasing if our base is greater than 1. And it is decreasing if our base is less than 1 but greater than 0. Let us determine the following by looking at the graphs here on the right. So the domain, both for these two graphs, is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now for the range, from 0 to positive infinity. But 0 is not included, don't forget. Now for the y-intercept, it's this point and that is 0, 1. Horizontal asymptote is the x-axis or y is equal to 0. Vertical asymptote, there is no vertical asymptote. And the trend, also let us look at our bases. Both are greater than 1, so our trend is increasing. Another one. Now, our domain, so from negative infinity to positive infinity is still. Range is still the same, that is from 0 to positive infinity, 0 not included. For the y-intercept, look at the y-axis. So this is the point, and again, that is 0, 1. Horizontal asymptote is still the x-axis, so line y is equal to 0. Vertical asymptote, we do not have that for exponential functions. And the trend, look at our basis as well. This is greater than 0, but less than 1. So the trend is decreasing. Now, let us check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Now, for the answers, both graphs have the same domain from negative infinity to positive infinity. They also have the same range from 0 to positive infinity, 0 not included. For the y-intercept, also the same, that is the point 0, 1. And the horizontal asymptote is the x-axis. The equation of that line is y equals 0. Again, we do not have vertical asymptotes for exponential functions, so none. And for the trend, the green one is increasing and the blue one is decreasing. Gets?